it, folks. I know this is a weird place to start a video. This is where I'm editing a trip that was last week that I had to really, I've dragged my feet on editing this and there's a sort of a selfish element at play here. Um, I've found something that is so good in terms of a presentation, something I had never done until last week that is so incredibly productive and simple and catches big fish. I don't know if I wanted to share it. I've had, I actually have had viewers say, why don't you do tournaments? This is why, this is why I give you the juice, the good stuff, because I have no, I'm not going to compete with you in a tournament. That's, that's a big part of it. But this, you know, it, it, and if I did, if I was a competitor, if I was someone that wanted to win tournaments, I wouldn't give you this. Oh my God. <laughs> in fact, I got a lot of buddies that <clears throat> do compete in tournaments and are routinely upset with me because <laughs> I give up really good stuff. It's just what I do. I'm trying to give you the tools give you the best presentations to to catch a bunch of big fish and this one is so good this one i'd never done this before and i don't you're gonna see the progression of how i came to do with a pretty big bait what i did that in shallow skinny water on a bluebird day where the big fish just they're tough to get to bite especially in shallow water i'm moving them this is new this is exciting for me fishing is most exciting to me when i when i learn new stuff and i'm so excited the next two maybe three videos are about this new presentation and it's a long video you're not going to get the full benefit unless you watch the whole thing. Here it comes. Look at that beautiful river. So Marty, we got oh, sorry. We, we got the, uh, the transitionary, our temperature today, we're hitting it's like mid-80s. Yeah. Two days from now. Those in the 40s. Yeah. It's a little chilly this morning even. I like it. Yeah. So that for fall sure weather. some... Uh, some top water, some crankbaits. I got the buzz bait ready. I think it's buzz bait prime time. I brought one too. And I do want to teach something on on fishing a spinner bait in these ledges here. That I did the video on on contact with wood. We're gonna talk a little bit about contact with rock and how you use a spinner bait to really dredge and just just like a wrecking ball down there same thing you do with a crankbait we're going to do that with a spinnerbait out here and uh really just bash some all this nice paint job i do in the twin spins all that paint's coming off bash them up that's it so before we get into messing around with the with the spinnerbaits in these these ledge trenches down here uh we're gonna go top water just because you know it's the perfect time of year this one I didn't tie um, slim. I left this one full profile, but it's still that same kind of rotating blade. Um, I'll have the one-two punch. I got another rod right here ready with the uh, the scented jerk shad on that. I think it's a 15th ounce head, just as a follow-up bait. It's critical to have those follow-up baits. All right, that was on the follow-up. The buzz bait hit. First one in the boat. All right, I've had a number of blowups on this, and I I do think that the buzz bait is a very visual way to um, <laughs> to tell, hey, there are fish there, but they're not committing. They're, you know, I, I did catch a fish as a result of throwing the buzz bait, and it it was because I had a follow up bait. But that last one I missed was was a better fish and i felt him i felt him 
but I didn't get them. So when that happens, I usually switch from something with one hook to something with many hooks. So I'm gonna throw, I'm, I'm still staying near the surface, but I'm gonna throw the, the subsurface crankbait. Uh, stay, you know, right there at the top of the water column. They are looking to eat there. I'm just giving them a different look, but one that I feel has a higher hookup percentage. Got one on the crank. Got you in my net. Gotcha. Alright, I got two. How many you got? I've got six or seven. Okay. I've kind of lost count. It's been pretty quick action so far. Now, is that what you're getting? I've on? been getting them on, yes, on the Whopper Plopper. That's pretty uh, Been getting a lot of action on it, um, but I think I probably would have had more fish. I'm catching a ton of grass. There's so that stuff there. Last time I was out, I, I incorrectly called this stuff eelgrass. This is called wild celery. Wild and my celery. Buddy, my buddy. Um, Mike Naylor, who's a who's a biologist. Called you out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he should. Yeah. He should because so anyway, like uh, he's he's educated me enough. I should know better. Sorry, Mike. Well, I've been catching a lot of celery. Wild I mean, celery. A lot of wild celery. So anyway, I think I've been could have caught a lot more fish, except for all these trebles are catching every cast is catching a lot of grass. So I'm uh, going to try and do about the same thing, but I'm throwing on the uh, Z-Man goat, Billy goat. Nice. Rigging it slightly weedless there okay and uh i'm gonna replace this out and hopefully not catch as much grass and get a few more fish nice so the amount of grass that this is bringing in fairly constantly has me thinking maybe i i do like what marty does and let's just focus on let's find some baits that we can cover a lot of water um that that don't catch this just constant supply of wild celery coming down the river. Let's take a look in the terminal uh, tackle box. Look at some different um, different jig heads that maybe I can put a, um, a small swim bait on and catch less of this stuff while covering a lot of water. So I'm gonna start, because it's fairly clear water, if it was a little bit muddier water, I'd go with a bigger profile, but I'm gonna start with the diesel minnow, I think it's a four inch in uh, in redfish toad. It's it's predominantly a shiny gold bait fish. Let's find a good um, good weed resistant head for uh, for this to work with. I want something that's gonna have a big enough hook gap. Is this gonna move it too fast? Yeah, it's it's not a big enough hook gap. It's great for if you're letting it sit and you, you have time to, to do that hook set. Maybe I'm doing one with one of these chin locks, but that's not a lot of weight. Let's look in here. Yeah, these rigging bullets, these, that's a spinnerbait hook. Um, so let's go heavier, it's only go faster. Yeah, that may seem like a lot of hook for that bait. If I can get this off my finger. Um, but I think I'll, I should be able to fish this fairly fast. And it's a big enough hook gap there that as soon as they decide they're going to eat it, it'll be on there. So I don't know what weight this is, but should be able to move that fairly quickly and uh, hopefully not get a lot of grass on it. Let's see how it does. I want to get the soft plastic fairly close to this guy. I don't want that lip out there. I want, I want this little gap right in here filled with soft plastic. And, because I, I don't want grass catching in there. So, what am I doing here? I'm rigging this fairly, fairly high on the nose so I can get past that. Yep, that's filled up. Small bait, heavy weight. I'm gonna burn it. All right, so I was, 
own the swim bait. And for sure, felt one hit, but it's hard to... You're cranking, right? And you feel something that you're like, that wasn't a rock. But you have to accelerate when you're already moving the bait. It's a hard thing to do. And, you know, my reaction was, all right, bring it in as fast as I can, reach down, grab the scented jerk shad, and finesse it. And that that did the trick. But just like the buzz bait this morning, the buzz bait finds them. It gets them to show themselves. And the, the, the follow-up bait always... Always gets them, you know. Another one in that, you know, probably 13, 14 inch range. Another good one for the the blotchy bass bonanza. Gotcha. So I know this from earlier this year, messing around with comparing hookup percentage of this bait, which is is doing a good job being weedless. It's just hard to, to time the swing, that hook set right, compared to that. That is gonna have a better hookup percentage. Just with them hitting it, the hook's right there. It's, it's, it's sticking up. This one, because, you know, it, it, even though it is weedless, they pretty much have to commit to, yeah, I'm gonna eat that. I'm gonna grab that and turn and, I just missed one there, um, and run with it. I think he just had the tail. Um, honestly, no, I, I should stop right there. Like, that's all I need to do is to feel the bite. Don't worry about it if you didn't get it. Go back in with the follower. Catch them that way. Because the follower is sitting still. They don't feel you. You come up onto them slowly. It's just a better, better hookup percentage. Of course, I have all that line out there now. Yeah, this is, this is gonna go well. <laughs> Tied on the higher percentage hook grass you know it's damned if you do damned if you don't I'm gonna keep throwing what I might hook a fish on that might just look like grass coming through the water because at least yeah grass every time uh, I don't know maybe I should go back to the other one I, I, I really feel like I just need to bank on because they're not really committing to the eat on the moving baits. Bank on letting them show themselves. Maybe I go back to the buzz bait. Letting them show themselves and then go back in with the, with the finesse. I do want to show you the kind of current that I'm talking about that, that looks right. Um, the kind of places where I've gotten gotten good bites look at this ledge rock this one that's close you got current running off the right side somewhere in that mix and that kind of turbulent current seam that is where I've been been getting bit I think I got a something working I'm gonna drop my anchor with that whole targeting a specific <clears throat> with a little bit of a wrinkle. That one hit this one after I after I ripped it. I actually skipped it in there, it went and then ripped it back and then let it fall down. And come on, anchor, drop. You know, just on the other side of this ledge, there's actually a log in there, but the current looked right. So looking at the current and judging, you know, turbulent ambush points, that, that for sure helped. All right, I got ideas now. A second ago said, I don't know, but I got an idea. 
That was a nice fish, but I'd like to... I want to scale this up. I want to do the same thing, that, that skip it in there, rip it out, let it de dead stick, but I want to do it on a larger scale. So I got, what are these, the seven inchers? I'm going to do it on this chin locks and just give them a bigger, a bigger target. Do the same kind of thing. I should tie that on with the, the snell knot first, but that's the chin locks, right? I'm going to tie that on there. It's fairly lightweight. It's a little bit of weight, but it's not a whole lot, but it's a bigger offering. And I'm thinking it'll get a bigger fish fired up, hopefully. We'll see. I'm going to hopefully tease him up with that bigger bait and then just dead stick it and say, okay, there it is. I got your attention. Here you go. Eat it. Is it going to work? Works on the smaller scale. Oh, that worked. That bigger profile did it. Oh, and it was fun to watch. <laughs> oh, that's... Man. I like this one. Oh. I like this presentation a whole lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. A little bit of a twist on um, what I said I was gonna do and what I actually did. But I found a winner. Weedless presentation, bigger bait, bigger fish. Got to see him come eat it. <laughs> that was good. Oh, you were good. I gotta teach this. This is good. This is something I haven't done before. Oh, it comes from, it starts with the phrase, I don't know. Haven't figured it out yet. Ooh, I just figured out something though. Yes. You helped me figure it out, you big, beautiful Susquehanna smallmouth. Man, I got to see her move on it. Then I dead sticked it. And then I saw the line moving. There's a little bit more going on than that, but this is, I think it's called Redbone, seven inch scented jerk shad. And I'm gonna teach you how I just made this happen. Hopefully it's replicatable, but man, that was beautiful. Let's see how big this guy is. I've been getting like 12 and a half, 13. And this one's, yeah, that's a 19 incher. That's a good one. <laughs> cool. So much fun to watch that go down on on a way that I haven't caught them yet. All right, I'm gonna get my pictures and we'll get this beauty back in the water. So I'm gonna teach you the presentation that just worked on that that one. That was he was just shy of 19, but I understand on the very next cast I got this, and some of that was that I was reeling against the drag. You don't want to do that. And and I had it set loose because I've I'm a little gun shy because I've broke off some big fish in recent trips on the hook set. Some of it though is the fact that and that bait is still out there. If you don't rig it straight, and I think I did rig it straight, but even then when you're when you're fishing a you know you know what I'm fishing, the scented jerk shed, this, this guy. And you're fishing it fast. It has, it has some propensity to, to corkscrew or not come back straight. There's no, unlike the, you know, the baits that have that, that boot tail, that keeps it centered. It keeps it keeled. And, and there is some keel, you know, to that particular chin locks hook but <laughs> you gotta watch the bait sometimes when you bring it in see which way it's spinning let it get it out of its system i've not done that and uh i think most of it was that i was reeling against the drag that the very next cast i have this mast i cast out the bait went out and 
I got to fix this. But you do want to watch your baits. Hang them, let them unspin, put it back out there. All right, I retied the leader because I I looked at <laughs> I got the knot out, but I looked at it. I'm like, it's still gonna it's gonna do it again on the next cast. So I removed some section of line, but you know that is what I'm working with. It's one of the lighter chin locks. I don't know what the weight is. I'll have to look it up and, and put it on there. But the seven inch scented jerk shaft. I don't have this really tight. I mean, you saw that fish, you know, was was diving underneath my kayak. And yes, I made the mistake. I like to point out my mistakes and that was one of them. I should have tightened the drag. I have it set loose. Like I said, I'm gun shy on the, on the hook set. I don't need a whole lot of power to set the hook with that wide a hook gap in the Elastec, which compresses very nicely. So uh, let me show you what I'm doing. You're gonna see it from this angle. GoPro start recording. You'll see it from that angle. Um, so first off, just like a buzz bait, and, and I'm really fishing this top water. Um, you you cast it out there and you flip the bail before it even touches down. My rod, rod tip, tip is high, high and all I'm doing is keeping the, the nose, nose of that bait on the surface. surface. So, so it's pretty, it's, pretty, it's, a, pretty it's a pretty straight retrieve. I'm not walking the dog with it. I'm not doing anything goofy. I'm just, it's a straight retrieve with that lightly weighted hook. I don't let it get down in the, the water column. I keep it on the surface. And I'm waiting for wake. And that's really what happened there. Waiting for some sign because that's how I've been been catching these these other fish on the you know the buzz bait. They show themselves and then I go back in with the follow-up bait. This is the power fishing bait and the finesse bait all in one. So when I see that wake running to this this larger profile. You know, either they hit it and I drop my rod tip and say, please run with it. Please get it all the way in your mouth. And then I come up onto them slowly, just like I do in the finesse and see, all right. And that's really what happened there. Um, you basically, with the same bait, can transition from power fishing, where I'm not catching any grass at all, into that dead stick presentation. That's it. I, and I've never done this. I've never done this straight retrieve with this style bait, keeping it on the surface, keel weighted. I'm so happy. I know it's just one fish, but like, whew, I'm going to put my follower bait away because I got two and one. I got both of them right there, but it's a bigger profile and uh, I'm excited. That's uh it's a fun new discovery. Let's see if I can replicate it. That might be the only fish I catch on this. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping this is a highly viable, productive way to fish this river in the fall with the grass. The grass is maddening. Catches on the treble hooks. Catches on spinner baits. Catches on even... Eh, to a certain extent, what did we start with? We started with this, or, or at least I was I was fishing this, and I was missing fish because they would grab it, and I'd feel them, and I'd go to swing, and they would have already dropped it. At least with, you know, and, and then I threw this for a while, and I had fish, you know, look at it and be like, it's a clump of grass, I don't want it. This is clean. This works. I'm gonna keep doing it. Rod tip high, move it, look for the wake, look for them to swat at it. As soon as they swat at it, kill it. Don't sit the hook. See, ah, you can have it. <laughs> it's all yours. Until about like four seconds from now when I know that it is in your mouth. That's, that's the tough part. Don't swing on them. Wait for the wait. Same as same as fishing a buzz bait. Yep. It's 
a big fish, big fish catcher for sure. <laughs> All right, the bait is seven inches. He's maybe nine. Uh, yeah, he's probably nine inches. <laughs> this is, you know, this is kind of small mouth fit. You know, is he ambitious? One day it will be a 20 plus inch. Yep, there you are. Killed it. Let him swat at it. Let it die. And then... Three count. Came up to it slowly. Felt the pressure. Wham! Hit it. Because there's so little weight on this, if you feel pressure, it is the weight of a fish. It's cool. This is working. It's working. Yes. New stuff. I show a lot of stuff that I've known for years. This is brand new stuff. This is the joy of fishing, is figuring out new stuff that works. God, it's the best. It's the best. And I get to share it with you as I'm figuring it out. Very cool. So, to be totally clear, this presentation is one that it stays on the surface. It's a straight retrieve. The bait is nose up. There is no twitching. There is no jerking. There's no letting it fall beneath the surface because you need them to come up to it. You need them to interact with it to say, yep, I see you, I'm gonna at least get really close to you on the surface. And as soon as I disturb the surface of the water, you know they're there and you just stop. You just stop reeling. Let it die. Let it die on their feet. Let them just say, oh, here's a gift. <gasps> You've already scared it to death. Here's an easy meal. But you gotta see them. You gotta see that wake. Works, I mean, it's, you know, in, in shallow water, this is beautiful, but sometimes you're, you're over deeper water. And if you're twitching it, if you're doing things to it underneath the surface, and it's not right at the surface, I don't think you're gonna see that interaction. You need that water to move. And for me, I can train my eye on it with its nose up, straight, coming straight back to the boat. I know exactly what it's doing. I know exactly where it is. I know exactly where to look to see, all right, any extra water moving around it? Nope. If the answer is yes, it's, okay, stop, stop. Let it die. Let it dive, let it go down. Let them have it easy what you want. I, I'm going to show this again while I re-rig it, but it is one of the lighter chin locks. Let me get that lit up against the, the sky. So it's got this belly weight. This is a Z-Man product. It's got that, that keel kind of belly weight. It's got a little bit of lead up there near where the chin of the bait rests, which keeps it on there, even though this, this bait slid way up there. I'm going to re-rig it and I think this one, the color is red bone. I mean, it's it's got a light belly. It's got that counter shading that I like to see. And then it's got a green pumpkin with red flake back. Um, it's good looking, good looking color. Um, I would still very much love to see this in a, uh, like a redfish toad or I have it in white. I may give Marty the white one to see if that'll work. I mean, white, white always works. One thing that I did add, because I've had a couple of them that have swiped at it, even though it is the scented jerk shad that has the, the Procure scent, um, I'm just making sure. I'm added a little bit of the liquid mayhem 
to this little flap in the belly. It's a nice way to hold scent for a little bit longer than it normally would. Just squirt some in there. All right, let's go find Marty and share the awesome news with him. You have to flip the bale by hand while this bait is, is still in the air. When this is about five feet above the surface of the water about to touch down, you gotta do that and then start cranking. Reason is, you gotta keep it on the surface from the beginning. If it's not on the surface, you don't force them to get close to it on the surface and show themselves. I don't know that this pattern or this tactic necessarily works on a windy day. I don't, I, I mean, they have to just commit to the eat. You're not going to see those subtle little swirls. You're not going to get them to show themselves and then make it easy for them. The same way that you can now where I have zero wind. Now, this for sure, with zero wind is a tougher bite. They're less likely to, you know, to decide to eat, you know, when they can see it really well. Yeah. They see what's wrong with it. They see how it's it's maybe not moving the right way or whatever. I, I think part of what makes this work is that it is so simple, such a straight, even nothing retrieve. Come on, interact with it. Show yourself. Show yourself. No twitching. No walking the dog. Straight. Just. Just give it to me straight. Give it to me straight. Just show yourself. All right, Marty, you ready to try this? I'm ready. All right. You're telling me it's working. I'm, I'm gonna give you, I was using Redbone, but you're gonna use Pearl. And it's the seven inch scented jerk shad. And we're gonna go ahead and rig that. But it's the, the chin locks. And they have heavier ones, but I'm having to use the lightest one. It's, it's this, you know, this one with the smallest weight on the belly there. So, do you know how to do a snell knot? Uh, yeah, I'll have to dig down into my uh, I'll do it. past arsenal, but... That's all right. I will do it, and oh, we'll, we'll show it for, for the camera. Yeah, right. give me your... give me a leader. All right, for the snell knot, we go in there. We're gonna... we're gonna grab it beyond the... Uh, let me give myself enough to work with. Beyond this little lead piece here that's the, the keeper, right? And we're gonna just wrap it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I pinch my wraps and I take the tag in through the loop that I made, right? I'm wetting it and I use my nails, my fingernails, which I don't have real long ones. But each one of those coils, I'm just, I'm getting it beyond that, that point. I'm going to have to snug it in, but I almost got them all. One more, one more coil. And, and they just stack up right behind the eyelet, right? And that will tighten down. And that really protects the knot. You know, the, the part that takes a beating is just this line, and that that knot is is in good shape. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the end of it, and then we will do, we'll get this guy on there. It's important to rig it straight, because if you don't, you, you're gonna have the same kind of snarled mess that obviously I got earlier. <laughs> So, you look at the mold line in there. You see the, right in the center? If you can, right in the center of the nose, that's where the injection mold happens. That's where they cut it off. Um, you really only need the length to, to the barb, and then you turn down. When you look at it this way, you want to make sure that it comes out 
on the center line. You don't want it coming off on the on either side because that's going to create some sort of you know corkscrew. The the keel weight helps, but if you can rig it straight to begin with, you're going to be in better shape. So we take it up past that little this guy here, and then um, just make sure this this is rigged straight. It's good to go. And you'll know, you you'll see whether it's it's coming back straight or not. If it's if it always wants to veer in one direction, re-rig your bait. Um, if if this bait is wants to go in one direction, eventually it's going to turn back in the other direction, and then it starts doing this. Right? This weight, the keel weight, helps that. But if you see it happening, stop, because this is in your future otherwise. Ready to throw it? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. So Marty's starting out right, rod tip high, keeps that bait on the surface. Try to get it to go as straight as possible. That's it. Rinse and repeat. Boom. Let's do it. So they're swiping and then you're killing it. And then what's... Sometimes it? I only see the V running towards it and there's no swipe. But I know that he's charging it. You see in the shallow water and you see the movement like 20 30 feet away moving Anyways. towards it stop yeah. just stop kill it right then and he'll run up onto it and then i don't i don't know do i tell you to wait three seconds or five I, you know or 10 seconds i don't know but but i come up onto it slow so that if it is in his mouth you're not feeling him going ur, ur, ur. hey hey fish spit it out quick before i set the hook yeah. you don't want to warn him come up on him slowly and a lot of times you just see the line moving right. you're like all right now I can give, it to him. <laughs> give him the hammer yep all right all sounds right. good all right well marty tries white i actually have some of the smaller ones i'm going to see if it works with the smaller ones i like the idea of the bigger ones more but i i want to play around with different colors I will have to stock up on that seven inch size, but I'm gonna try it with a five and see see if it works. You know, that same same weight. Um, it, I may have to move it faster to make it work, but I'm uh, I'm gonna try that color, which is called Beer Run. For the wake. And for those V's to come up behind it. Get in between these rocks. Looking for swirls. Anything interacting with us at all. Any sort of water being pushed, swirl, slap, subtle little bulge of water coming up behind it is a really good sign. actually see him moving up here. I should be able to get this one to bite. Yep. He showed himself before I even got there. He was already amped up wanting to show himself. Didn't come in that easy? can't believe that after all that craziness. So you can do it with a five inch, but I feel like you gotta move it even faster to keep it on the surface. And it is likely to go under the surface. As soon as it does, it's corkscrewing. So this presentation is just better with the five, or not with the five, with the seven. Uh, I'll keep throwing this for a while, see if they if they like it the same way. I think I can catch a couple fish on it, but I think I'm going to go back to the 7 here pretty quickly. Yeah, too many advantages with the 7 to not throw the 7. Um, I think you're going to move big fish better. Uh, looks like Marty's got a good one over there. We'll go over and check it out. It stays on the surface better. I'm coming! If it casts further, 
you get greater casting distance with a heftier bait. Just a lot of advantages. What you got there, Marty? Some mm. susky browns right there. And you said there were chunk. a couple. couple there was it. at least two, I think three more that were just as big, maybe a hair bigger, right around the same size. Uh, chasing this one out, where well, this one had the bait in its mouth. Okay. So I was yelling you to get up here to try and try and get on the yeah, we'll get the, them. the bite. But I'm not gonna lie. They do uh, both pack up. I thought, you know, I was a bit skeptical. I, I've learned not to not to doubt Jeff too much, but this was a little. Little, I was a little skeptical, it's but weird, right? I'm telling you, it's weird that that works. I spooked two of them coming up Stay in this retreat. really shallow water. I threw up past that brush pile back there. I got about a foot on this side of the brush pile, and she, she whoosh, she toilet bowled it. She didn't get it, but I killed it. Waited about three seconds, and the, the line was moving off. She had it. So yeah, I, I, I'll give you props <laughs> again. It worked. Another beast. Nice man. Can't beat that. All right, so Marty was, oh, he's off. Marty was kind enough to say, hey, we got him over here. He got one. And you just want to tag team work, work an area. If your buddy's on him, I just, I didn't get a good poke on him. Marty's getting in on the the blotchy bass bonanza as well. What'd you get? 18 and a quarter. Nice. Nice catch, man. It's a nice fat one. Oh, don't do that. I'm gonna let you go, girl. Still. All right. Didn't have to be rude, but third nice fish today. I like it. Nice, man. So we got the wind picking up and it's getting more difficult to see those subtle little slashes. I think it just had one. Maybe not. It's it's harder to tell, you know. It, it, yeah, some of the hits are, are obvious, but most of them are just these little, hey, I'm curious, I'm not committed, but I want to see what you do. And Sometimes those are your biggest fish that do that kind of stuff. And with the wind putting some texture on the water, ugh, it's getting harder to pick up on those. Marty, how many big fish you got? You caught on this so far? Ooh, that, I think is number five, at least four or five. So you got five of them over 18, I yep. think. Yeah. If you, well, if you count, I'd say three of them on, at least three on this, four on this. And then one on the whopper And then I got popper. one on the whopper plopper earlier, yep. So you got a 90 inch total on the day. Whew, it's rough. My arms are tired. <laughs> Tell me about I, this I one. think I'm getting carpal tunnel. Where was this guy? So right off the back of this grass island, uh, you got that calm, slick water, and he actually hit it right on the edge of that, where the, the run there coming through, shallow water, blew up on it, missed it, I killed it, about eight inches behind where the first blow up was, after I killed it, it was so you a think big, it was a second fish? No, I think, think it was this one? fish just because I killed it and it came by and it. it was swirling on it. It was still chasing. I killed it and it whoop, swirled. <laughs> it was like two blow ups of one fish. It was awesome. That's awesome. It was just so shallow in there. She swirled on it to, to eat it. And as soon as she did, I came tight and she was there. It's beautiful looking water. And the first thing she did was come about that high up out of the water. Really? <laughs> I heard you holler. Oh, it was awesome. You feel them big old, that big fat fish like that coming a foot and a half, two feet out of the water, man. Very cool. Like, yeah. That's good. Another good one. Let me get a picture and then I'll. Yeah. This is the fifth one over 18 for the day. This is the biggest one so far. Right at 19 inches. Just a hair over. We gonna let her go.
missed him the first time and kept casting in that area. That was good. Like he, he jumped on it. I don't know, he may not be the only one in there too. Giving the at you. So that was in water so skinny that when I run up into it, like I, I will have to lift the prop and that's that's some of the advantage of, of doing this is that you get to go in water that's so incredibly skinny with a bait that just it gets through there clean I mean it's it casts a mile it gets their attention and if you can pause it if you can kill it and let them eat it and the hook's in there good. The hook's in there really good. All right. Even with the wind picking up, that was obvious. They're getting more aggressive. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me that you can't see it as well as you needed to before because, I don't know, they're, they're being more obvious. All right, Marty here is, uh, you got to be on the road by four. I do, unfortunately. Okay. I'm gonna stay out longer. You're gonna cut through these islands here and head back. Hopefully, that's the plan. You coming with me on Friday? I'll let you know. Okay. Then uh, work. I'm I'm gonna keep this pattern going. By Friday, things are gonna be totally different. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna get a 25 degree temperature downswing, and uh, I don't know. Might might shut off this pattern and maybe we get something else but i'm gonna keep riding it and enjoying it <laughs> i certainly would i am too until i get back <laughs> right all right yeah, good luck man good. nice job on a 90 plus inch day been good again yeah i appreciate it yep see you buddy see ya all right this is really subtle and when i look at it i see i don't want to say a plus water but water that's overlooked and it's in the middle here most people are gonna see hey here's some push water and yes you should be fishing that and then they'll look up there and see you know all right there's another ledge that's creating that little riffle what's in between what is on what is happening right in here look at this current swirl and it's a ledge that's sort of in between that one and this one back here. It's one that I think a lot of people would miss. And it's got a little chute running right down into it. So, hard to see. Um, but years of experience, just if you watch and look for those intermediate ledges. So I didn't catch anything off of it, but it, it does illustrate obvious ledge, obvious ledge. And then one in between in these, I don't want to say mid-pool edges. It's one way to describe them, but there, it's very small. Um, everything's two feet, but there's a ledge rock like that, and that's maybe three and a half right there. That's enough to hold them, you know. And it's, you know, this is what a lot of people work. They're gonna, a lot of people are gonna work that, and a lot of people overlook that spot and you find them by looking at the surface like that there's something there oh he's off oh and i lost my hat on that hook set yep they're in there i just see him moving across there this is what seems to be working is that you sneak up in this super shallow water behind them like this is less than a foot and I'm casting up into two feet in here. Ah. Right. I'm in super skinny water. 
casting up into slightly deeper, but not really. I mean, that last one I got, I was sitting back in eight inches of water. He was right in here. Get a foot deep, maybe. It's most of my paddle length, so yeah, it's a foot. Oh, this is perfect, and it feels like a good one. Uh, that was on one of those intermediate ledges. Yeah, this is a good fish for sure. Uh huh. Very good fish. I gotta get him in the net before he takes me down that uh, that bigger chute. Oh, I can't believe that just happened. Oh, I just broke a rod. Oh, I don't feel like I was doing something. I should have broke that rod. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it sucks. Breaking a rod sucks. Oh, I think it's my last seven foot medium heavy. I lost one earlier in the year. All right, I gotta find a different rod to throw this on. All right, next man up we got, uh, this is just my spinnerbait rod. I was gonna throw the, throw this rig on there. I really, I don't feel like I overloaded that rod. I think something else happened earlier. Maybe I'm wrong, but that rod was rated to one and a quarter ounce. It was a medium heavy fast. It was a a saltwater, you know, it was, it was an inshore rod. So this is not, I don't think that's more than an ounce and a quarter, I think is what it was rated for. Anyhow, I don't have another rod that I do feel comfortable throwing that on. So what I'm doing is changing up. Uh, we're gonna go with some of the twin spins I've been making. So in order to make this I mean, this is going to be a lot of busyness coming through the water. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some bulk, put the, the diesel minnow on there, and hopefully I can get the same casting distance I was getting uh, with, with the 7-inch scented jerk shad as I can with this twin spin spinnerbait. I think casting distance was part of it, but I think the simplicity of of that bait moving so quickly. I don't know. I, I don't think they see a lot of it. I know they see spinner baits and you know, this one's a little different. This one's pretty busy. We'll see if we can catch something on it. Collision as much as possible. Smack them in, into the rocks, into the logs, into the grass bed edges, whatever I can. Collision with the spinner bait is really important go find some stuff to run it into so I just don't want to stay away from that profile very long so I'm gonna put it on the uh, scrounger head I know from earlier this summer that uh, this gets bit this is a good um, it's a good profile it's not gonna go as fast as what I was doing just riding it on top but I think it'll it'll get the job done so the scrounger for sure i'm right back to where i was throwing the buzz bait this morning with the grass i have another idea i was actually throwing a a wacky rig senko the other day why not just nose hook this this larger bait and um just let it scoot across the surface however it does i'm gonna have to watch the line twist for sure but this uh, octopus hook that is that little uh, weed guard, I don't know, that might get it done. That fish was right where it should have been and um, I pulled drag when I set the hook and that did not get him. Yeah, the, the weed guard was triggered but 
That did not just catch that fish. It's a good fish too. <sighs> so I found a way, a presentation that works really well, but I broke a rod using it. And now I'm afraid to throw it because of too much weight. I've really just had one blasted with a nose hook. Um, you know, the seven inch sense of jerk shaft right there. You know, this eddy fish came shooting out of right where that log is. I crossed his eyes, but I didn't. I just didn't get him. This is where he wanted to, this is where he was hanging out. It is a little deeper here. Yeah, he was in this grass. Oh, and there's a stump here. Let's work this grass edge with a nose hook one. Since that fish that I missed came shooting out of grass, let's go ahead and target the grass. I have lost three fish on the nose hook rig. This is the first one I've actually landed. It's uh, it's not my favorite, but this is a start and I don't know. Maybe I have to look at how I rig it. Like what, what kind of hook, what kind of octopus hook or I actually left the, the weed guard open that time. So I just cast it off. I know that the Elastec is super durable, but maybe not for the nose hooking. I'm going to try rigging it the other way and maybe not getting so crazy on the casting. We'll see if this holds. But yeah, it, it, split, it split the nose. And I kind of didn't think that was going to happen with Elastic. But there are limits. But yeah, it was on a cast. Just casting it out there. It was flying and thankfully because it floats, you know, I went over and grabbed it. <laughs> I'm going to move on from the nose hook rig. It's not that I haven't done this before. I've done this with traditional um, like Zoom Super Fluke. I've done, I've nose hooked them with octopus hook and circle hooks. You go through a bunch of them that way. The Elastec less so, which is, is nice, but that was not a good hookup percentage. So, let's try just a lighter wire EWG with the grip pin. Again, it's gonna be the same sort of on the surface, you know, and I, I get the impression that they're less likely to to eat it if if they've swiped at it and missed it and it's laying on the surface as opposed to if it flutters down to the bottom. You know, I've had some blow-ups that I've missed and I'm like, just leave it, they don't touch it. Not always, but I don't know, it's just my early impression on that. Okay, that's what it looks like. Just the grip pin is there. That should have a very good hookup percentage. I'm hoping it's better than that, the nose hooking it. And um, I, I still like the, um, the chin locks the best. The lightly weighted chin locks. It gives it a keel, but it's just too much weight for this particular rod and I'm gun shy on breaking another today. Right away, that was a better hookup percentage. First hit, and that, ah, oh, it's a big one. So maybe that's a good way to rig him. What do you think, fishy? You, you're a giant. Yeah, look at you. You're a heavy fish, I'm gonna let you breathe. Ooh. All right. Uh, might be my biggest for the day. What I got this morning was eight, 18 and three quarter. I think 
think he's in that 18 range though. Yeah. Yeah. Just shy of it. By the way, if you're watching this part of the video, you are uh, one of those few numbers that are at the end of the retention graph that drops and uh, you're getting the juice. You're getting the good stuff. This is, I think I'm more excited about this than I was the, uh, you know, the chin locks. I know it's just the first fish on it, but that was an excellent, clean hookup. And I, I, you know, he slashed at it. I paused it for just a second and he was already moving and hooked, hooked himself. So it's this sort of experimentation that really, you know, rig, rig a bait that they want as many different ways as you possibly can. See if you can figure out, you know, what's going to give you your your best presentation, your best hookup percentage, uh, the least line twist, which this is actually doing okay. It's It kind of planes like a surfboard. Yeah, it gets on its side. I think I wanted one of the other baits or one of the other riggings to do that and it didn't, but this is. This is good. That one grabbed it right at the boat and I think it's big. Yep, that's a big one. Still got a lot of energy. Yeah, that's a big fish. Mm. You like that white seven inch. Shed. Mm -hmm. Tired? You tired? You're hooked. Ah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, but I ain't coming easy. Mm. Get you in there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's big for the day. All right, I continue to refine how I'm presenting the, the um, pearl colored scented jerk shad, the, the seven incher, but this 19 and a quarter incher, liked it, weightless, just on a, I think it's a two watt grip pin hook. I think it's actually one of the fine wire ones. So that came into play. That, that fish grabbed it and it, it hooked itself. It, it did all the work for me. And man, I gotta get pliers on it. Like it's hooked solidly. Oh, 19 and a quarter. Hmm, there. Yeah, I needed, needed pliers to get that out. Alright. Gonna do a nice release sequence for uh, for the Instagram account, maybe a slow mo. If it'll let me get get it on the uh, the board for the Balachi Bass Bonanza. I believe the best way to fish this is just keep it moving. Even if you, if they hit it. What makes this work is that it is trackable. I know I've done videos where I say, hey, spinnerbait, uh, jackhammer, whatever it is, do erratic stuff with. Yeah, it's moving slower. It, it needs that erratic um, movement. I think this is moving so fast, you want it running straight because they will miss it as fast as, as it's going, or, you know, that's a good one. Oh gosh, that's a really good one, and I'm floating down through this rapid. Mm. Very good one. Glad I have all this stability, the inflatable kayak, I don't have to really worry about it. That's a big, big fish. Uh, how big are you? Ah. You're hooked now. 
Look at that hookup. I mean, right in the corner of the mouth, and it's, again, I need the pliers, but another really nice one. That one's at least 18. I may actually catch up with, uh, <laughs> with Marty's 90 plus inches. I bet you he had between 91 and 92 inches. I might, with that one, be right at 90 inches. So there's bound to be some line twist on this spool by the time I'm done with this. But I do believe that keeping it on the surface and not letting it go subsurface where it wants to just start corkscrewing is important. There's something with the, the speed that it keeps it in a certain orientation, nose up, and just scooting along like a surfboard. No barrel rolls, please. So I'm way upstream from where we started. It is 6.07. I've been out here almost 12 hours in, uh, cause I came up so slow. I even have uh, almost 75% of my battery left. So if at any point that I need to really just get moving, like I'm running out of daylight, I've got plenty of power because coming up, I was so, conservative with it I was you know I just used enough to get up through the riffle that was in front of me and I didn't race it or gun it anywhere so one battery was enough today even though I bet you I'm four and a half miles I bet you I got four and a half miles it's funny I really thought I'd be out here teaching you guys uh, how to bottom bash with a uh, spinnerbait today but stumbled upon this kind of different way of fishing a bait that I've fished before in, in different ways. Uh, the first successful way of fishing the, the white or pearl colored scented jerk shad, the seven incher, was on the chin locks. And you know, you had to, you had to let them have it. You had to, you know, let them swirl on it. Make sure your line, you know, you come up on it slow. You can feel it come tight on them and then set the hook. Um, broke a rod, that sucks. Um, but it forced me into doing things like, um, well, like nose hooking it, you know, with a wacky hook. That didn't work. Um, did the scrounger head. The scrounger, I think, I know it will work. I know it has worked for me in the past, but the one that I really feel like this is a big win to, to figure this out is on a two or three aught EWG grip pin hook. You know, it's, <laughs> it's on par. It might be a little bit better than when I figured out how to do this with uh, the Billy Goats for Tidal Largemouth. Great hookup percentage. Um, well, Largemouth anywhere. You know, it's it's just a very um, weedless presentation that stays on top. It it doesn't, you know, it skips well. It doesn't. It just doesn't get into trouble. In good hookup percentage. I I think I'm trying to think if I've lost any on this. If I have, they haven't been big ones. The big ones. This gets them really good, all on its own. Um, the, the important thing, though, is a couple things. One, that you're moving it, you're keeping it on the surface, you're running it straight, you're not letting it dive down because that's where it corkscrews, and that you rig the bait straight on the hook. Uh, one, one downside to these baits, if you're... I've even done it with the traditional way where people twitch, 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 like you would with a hard jerk bait. I don't like doing it because they they corkscrew coming through the water and you end up getting, you know, a lot of tangles. I did on that first one, but once I resolved it, I've covered a lot of miles just, just you know, casting and moving it right across for the most part, the upstream side of something 
a grass bed, a ledge rock, uh, it, just anything upstream side of something. That is going to change. Uh, I can already feel it cooling off. And uh, by Friday, eyes in the upper 50s, maybe low 60s, but you know, it's going to start in the uh, in the mid 40s. And that's that's things changing. That's summer giving way to fall. And uh, I'm happy with this. This is a, a good early fall, but for sure I missed out on it all summer. Uh, presentation for these uh, these big Susquehanna River smallmouth. It's been fun. Thanks for watching to the end.